The island of Hydra is a range of mountains sitting on the sea. The rocky, inhospitable coast scatters its cliffs into the waves, leaving very few places for sailors to land, except in the main town. And yet, in the 19th century, the island was an important maritime power. There are no cars or motorbikes on Hydra because of a ban designed to ensure the peace and quiet of the surroundings. Mules are called into service for carrying luggage. The steep slopes climb up to the 600-meter summit. There are few places, even in Greece, where you can find such serenity. Here, everything inspires tranquility, relaxation, and the gentle way of life. It's not surprising that artists find inspiration in the atmosphere on Hydra. Natasha Best is a painter. She's been living here for 20 years. The island has always had the same fascination for her. For a painter, I think it's one of those places, one of those miraculous places where you find inspiration at every step because of the light, because of the fact that the place is practically unchanged since the 18th century. There are no cars, no scooters, no noise. The rhythm of life is so different. There's the village aspect, and then there's... and then the beauty of the architecture, which is quite specific to here, because most of the other Greek islands don't have this architecture at all. The people who came to settle in Hydra in the 14th century were, in fact, for the most part, Albanian émigrés who fled here after the Turkish conquest of the Peloponnese. They were very primitive people who soon turned to piracy and made their fortunes in that way. They became very rich. And then, from being pirates, they turned into merchants. As they got richer, they wanted to build houses that were more like palaces, to show off the wealth they'd acquired. The Arcontica, the beautiful old residences, were built for the rich families of shipbuilders. Several members of the family that lived here held political positions of great responsibility in Greece. The delicacy of the decorations in the Church of the Assumption of the Virgin demonstrates the standard of living in the Hydra of the 17th century. The taste for things beautiful has been upheld. You can even see this in a chemist's shop. To keep his bakery running and to make his bread, the baker needs ingredients that cannot be found on the island. The soil on Hydra is in fact barren. Nothing grows here. Fruit, vegetables and basic necessities. Everything has to be imported and then carried by mule. The name Hydra comes from the word Hydor in ancient Greek, which gave Hydro and means water. But the island has no water. It has to be brought in by boat and stored in tanks. The aridity of the island's landscape is striking. The meager layer of arable earth was in most places washed away down the slopes long ago. A few plant species have nevertheless managed to cling on, like the agaves.
To get to know Hydra, you have to walk. You can also go along the coasts in a water taxi. The water taxi can set you on shore at places that are difficult to get to, and the trip is worth every penny.